Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jennifer Bennett. I am currently in my second to the last semester for um, my associates in uh, social work. I stayed at home for about 10 years as a stay-at-home mom until I finally decided to go and do what I enjoyed, and that is helping people. Um, I am currently a um, parent aide for the Children and Family Services in Knox County, Indiana. We service people in the south and in the north, and I am based in central. Um, I got this job working as a CASA, or volunteering as a CASA, for a while, and um, I think it's given me great experience and to see how things work in social work environment. I mostly work with DCS um, with younger children. I do supervised visit and parent aid. I um, do anything from discipline skills to transportation. And sometimes parents even know how, need to learn how to cook or clean, right? They've never been taught how to from family members. So when I took this class and saw that we had to write an essay about one of these therapies, the first one that stuck out to me was the motivational interviewing therapy. Because when we first, when I first started, that was one of the videos we had to watch. And some people might say, well, you chose the easy, you chose the easy one to talk about. But in my opinion, I chose what I felt was the most important to me. Um, in this day and age right now, you're seeing more of the motivational interviewing happening in all realms of social work. Um, what motivational interviewing is, is basically including your client in on their planning and helping them work through what changes need to be made to better their life. When you first start out, a client will have to come up with a plan of action as to how they're going to better themselves. Like in my realm, if a child is removed from the home, we come up with a safety plan and a concurrent plan as to, you know, when is reunification going to happen? When is, you know, if that doesn't happen, what kind of plan do you want for when the rights are terminated? And to do that with a client, we use motivational interviewing. It is evidence-based. It is proven to help clients get better faster. Um, especially using it with alcoholics because they can help themselves and see what they need to change. You know, we work in a line of work where sometimes these clients don't know what needs to be changed. And I think motivational interviewing, they can see what needs to be changed. And a lot of clients don't want to change, but you know, this will encourage them. It's a form of empowerment. You know, these clients are down at their lowest. So motivational interviewing and building their self-esteem back up is what I feel like most of them do need. Um, you know, when we do emotional interviewing, you have to empathize with your client. You know, there's no judging. You're, you don't, you're not mad at the client, you're mad at their actions. Or upset with their actions. Nobody's bad, it's the actions that they chose to do. You have to ask open ended questions. You know, a lot of these clients, they don't have the chance to get to really tell anybody what their problems are. When you ask open ended questions, they're able to just basically talk and tell you whatever they, you know, and then you can build on that. You can ask, you know, the secondary questions, you know. When you ask a client, one thing that I've noticed when you ask a client, when they tell you something and you don't know what, you know, really they mean by it, when you ask them, you know, I don't understand that. Could you explain it to me better? It opens up a whole new realm um, to people telling you things. You learn a lot more from your client by using motivational interviewing. Yeah, just the empowerment of it is something that you get from it. Um, Studies have shown that motivational interviewing has helped tremendously in AA or rehabs for alcoholics. There was a study that I put in my um, essay about these um, therapists and health workers at a um, 
alcoholic um, therapeutic setting, there was, I believe, 11 to 40 um, alcoholics that were tested when they were taken to this clinic. There was about 40 of them, I believe, that were had therapeutic or motivational interviewing. And out of those 40, besides the ones that didn't, were more successful in their treatment and were more successful at remaining sober. Um, that, to me, speaks volumes. And we can see where motivational interviewing helps. You know, I would not personally want somebody to tell me what was wrong. I would want to help them create a plan with myself because you meet these people one time and we're already working on a case plan. How, you know, that's a lifetime of things that this person or this, you know, man case manager might not know about you. And I feel that motivational interviewing and having that empowerment will help. Um, going forward, I, I don't believe, and studies show that motivational interviewing will continue to grow in being able to help more people. We see direct care staff workers using motivational interviewing over other therapies um, at hospitals, doctor's offices, social work, you know, around children and adults. Um, you know, without motivational interviewing, I don't think that we would get to where we need to be with clients um, at all. Motivational interviewing is a very important step in helping your clients. You know, we are taught that the empowerment approach is the mo one of the most important approaches besides, to me, the medical approach. And I think that motivational interviewing will just get bigger and bigger from here. Thank you.